What is going on guys? Greggles TV. As you know, if you've been following my channel anyway, I am a huge Android fan. I absolutely love it and I've been using Android phones for years now uh, to the point where I haven't used an iPhone since the iPhone 5 as my daily phone and I changed things up starting last week. I switched over basically exclusively over to the iPhone 11 Pro Max and I want to give you my positives and my negatives of switching exclusively to an iPhone 11 Pro Max. Now, before we get into the positives and the negatives, let's first talk about stuff that's kind of in the middle for me personally, and that is the design. So the back of the phone, I thought I was gonna absolutely hate it. You've got these three cameras on the back in a, in a you know triangle or face kind of design, depending upon how you look at it. And the pictures, I don't think do it complete justice. In person, I actually don't think it's that bad looking, at least on the back. It's better looking than I thought. As for the front where you have the notch, I still don't like it. I think, you know, I'm glad. I think I think this will probably be the last year we see phones that actually have these big notches in there. I think next year it'll be completely away from this, especially iPhone. I expect them to at least have a much smaller notch or no notch at all at that point. And um, does it get in the way? Not really, you kind of grow accustomed to it, but it's just, again, it's stuff kind of in the middle for me. Don't love it. Don't hate it completely, but also, you know, again, kind of in the middle. Okay, so now let's get into the positive stuff. So first of all, the keyboard on iPhone is amazing in terms of accuracy. It's something I struggle at times with on Android and I didn't whatsoever with Apple's keyboard. It's amazing. It works really well. Swipe is in there. So if you're a big swiper, you can swipe your finger along the keys and get accustomed to that. And also again, just regular chicken typing where, you know, you're just tapping uh, works awesome on this. So I can't say enough good things. It was awesome back when I used an iPhone, back with the iPhone 5. Things have not changed. They've only improved with it. So I would give the keyboard an A+. Now the iPhone 11 Pro Max does not have a fingerprint sensor and hasn't had a fingerprint sensor for the last few years now. And didn't bother me whatsoever. Their face unlock, their face ID works awesome. It's super fast. It unlocks the phone before you even know it. It's accurate. The only time I had problems with it, I had sunglasses on. Um, at night, it struggled a little bit. But otherwise, you know, 95% of the time, I liked it. I definitely like it better than the in-screen fingerprint sensor that uh, Samsung uses. That to me still is slow and inaccurate compared to fingerprint sensors that are on the side or on the power button or on the you know bottom on the front, not under the screen. So face unlock, face ID, amazing on the iPhone. One of the huge upgrades this year with Apple phones is the camera and the cameras are amazing. I love the cameras on this. Taking photos or taking videos, have it be on the front camera or the back camera, they come out awesome. I took this phone with me to Hawaii and I had a great time. A lot of people raved about the cameras on here. Um, they just do a great job. Have it be in low light or just a natural light or whatever kind of lighting setting you're in, you can take amazing photos. Uh, taking photos of the stars came out really, really cool. I love the cameras. I, I think they, they really improved this year and they were always pretty good um, cameras, but they really took it to another level this year. Another nice thing about the iPhones is the screen. The screen is bright, it is clear, it is well calibrated. It just looks great and whatever you're doing, have it be watching videos or maybe you're just looking at photos or whatever you're doing, photos and, and videos and just overall usage of it be social media or whatever you're doing, comes out awesome on this phone. So I, the display, they really, again, did a great job with this and uh, you know, two thumbs up. The last huge thing they did with this phone is battery. And in the past, I know a lot of people might have complained about battery life or maybe they love battery life with iPhone. I always thought they had really good standby time, but then when you use it, it would die quickly. It's kind of, it's over. The, the, the battery is amazing this year. I, I, I me personally, got the best battery life on the iPhone than I did on any phone I've used ever, even better than Android. So uh, the standby time is fantastic. The, the battery just little, little drips, like barely nothing battery life uh, it uses. Unlike with, with my Samsung phone, if I you know just let it sit there, I'll lose, by the time I wake up, if I just let it sit there, I'll lose like 15% battery life over the you know time I went to bed at the time I wake up, sometimes maybe even more. Whatever, 
iPhone, I have the same apps installed, did not happen. So I loved the battery life, you know, just the standby time. And then actually using it, I personally, which might not sound like a lot to you, I was getting anywhere between six and seven hours of screen on time, but that's, it's not dying at that point. I still had, sometimes I had uh, 30, 40% of battery life left with the phone. So I got fantastic battery life. I personally don't get that on a regular basis with Android. Android, I'll end up getting usually four to five. Sometimes I'll get six, but at that point, the phone's basically dying. This was not dead. This still had, again, 20, 30, 40%, and I had six hours of screen on time. So I had amazing, amazing battery life with this phone. Dun, dun, dun. Now let's get into the negatives. You knew they were coming, so here they are. The first one is weight. This thing is heavy. Like right now, my wrist is getting a little bit tired holding this. So, you know, it's something to keep in mind. You're using it in bed at night, you're holding it. It's gonna get a little heavy. You might wanna use a phone loop, which I love those things. Look them up on my channel, I have reviews on them. Um, or like one of those things to you know, just hold your phone a little bit easier, but it gets heavy. So it's just something to keep in mind. I don't know why it's so much heavier than like a, a, a Galaxy phone, but it's, I don't know, it's a lot heavier. Now keep in mind, this is coming from me. I've been an Android user for years now. You know, I was Apple and then I was, now I'm Android. So some of this stuff might not even, you might not care about, you might, it might not even bother you, but this next one is bothers me. I love the back button on Android. It just makes using the phone easier. Um, I, I like it. So being able you know, to, to jump around without having to go, I feel like with, with, with iPhone, depending upon what app you're in, um, sometimes you have to hit the back button in the top left. Sometimes it's in the top right. Sometimes, I just can't find it at all. So it's like stuff like that that just annoys me about the iPhone. I, I love the back button. I think it makes using a, a smartphone easier and I don't know, I'd like to see it on an iPhone. Next is double tapping the power button to launch the camera. I use it all the time with Android and unless I'm missing something and you guys can always tell me in the comments down below, it doesn't have it. I wanna be able to double tap the power button in order to launch the camera. You can't do that with the iPhone, so it's just an annoyance to me. I, I wish it had it. Next up, no USB-C, come on, Apple. It's like they still use a proprietary lightning cable, so if you're into that whole Apple ecosystem, you're probably fine, but for someone like me, everything is USB-C. Even my MacBook, which is an Apple product, has USB-C, I can charge it with that. Um, all my Android phones and tablets, USB-C. Almost everything I have is USB-C. I would love to see Apple switch over to that. I think they might next year, we'll see. Um, so it's definitely an annoyance that the iPhone doesn't have USB-C. Next is notifications. Now, I think Android does it pretty much awesome and perfect and Apple's not so much. First of all, notifications. Um, I like seeing the little icons at the top on Android that tell me you know, what kind of notification I have. It tells me, oh, it's a Facebook notification, it's an email, it's a text, it's something. You know, I don't have to, if, so if it's not important to me, I don't have to swipe down and look. Apple doesn't show that. The other thing, when you have it pulled down so you can see your notifications, it's, now, I wanna swipe these away. So if you swipe from left to right, you can open it. That's great, cool, I, I don't mind that. If you swipe from the right to the left, you can manage it, you can view it, or you can clear it. I don't know why I need another button to view it when I could just either tap it or swipe it from the left to the right. Clearing it annoying and then if you want to complete another way to clear it is you can long swipe it from the right to the left i want to just swipe it away that's what i want to do i don't have to long swipe it away so i think i find that very very annoying no customization with the home screens i mean sure i can create you know folders and i can um change the wallpaper but beyond that it's locked in like i love having a launcher with android i can put apps on my home screens, or they can be in the app launcher if I don't use them all the time. I can keep my home screens as clean or as messy as I want. It puts me in full control. iPhones do not do that for us. And now I have to have all my apps on the home screen. I hate that. 
Come on, Apple, give me some customization. Another big thing is widgets. So I love having my calendar widget uh, on my home screen for my Android phones. I don't have to open up the calendar. I can look like at the next, you know, seven to 10 days on there and see what I have going on without having to open up the app. You can't do that on the iPhone. I'm sure you can swipe uh, over from the left to the right and look at stuff that they find trending and they have a little search box and things like that. Somewhat similar, but it's not the same. It's not the same, come on. And then the last thing that I can you know, think of that I kept notes on is, and there's probably way more that either I missed or didn't think of or it's, you know, whatever, but it's the ability to not be able to change my default app. So anytime that I, maybe I looked up an address on uh, Google Chrome or in Safari or someone sent me an address and I wanted to look it up, even after uninstalling Apple Maps, and I had Google Maps already installed, it still would only try to go and give me directions through Apple Maps. It's annoying that I can't change some of the default apps. That's nice that you can do that on Android. You can't do that with iPhone. I find that limiting. I find it locked into their ecosystem and just completely, completely annoying. With all that being said, the iPhone is a fantastic phone. If you're coming from another iPhone and you want and I, this iPhone, you're going to love it. It's fantastic. The battery life, the camera, the performance in terms of like just r running around the operating system and opening up apps and, and, and just doing whatever works, awesome. It's really, really well-made phone. It does the basics really well. Phone calls, texting, typing, talking into the phone, whatever it may be, it just does a great job with that. So, you know, it, you're gonna have a, a, a fine time with it. I had issues with you know software bugginess in terms of sometimes an app wouldn't work properly or I wouldn't get notifications for certain apps like emails even though I had it turned on. Just like stupid stuff that annoyed me. So I think if you're coming from Android and you really love Android, I don't think necessarily you're gonna like iPhone all that much. I, I think there's enough difference with Apple and Android that you won't like it, but maybe you will. Maybe you don't like Android and you want to try the iPhone, maybe we'll, you'll like it. But for me personally, I love Android. There's, there's pretty much almost nothing I don't like about it that you know they can't either improve on or fix or change that Apple probably won't. So I'm sticking with Android. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below if you've used this phone. I'll see you guys down the road. Peace.